this recent spate of, of storms is sort of the, the tip of the proverbial iceberg. Correct. They say. Uh, pardon the pun, <laughs> by the way. It's apt. <laughs> um, it's apt. Um, we can't predict what Mother Nature is going to do. Right. Uh, but um, we can put things in place to at least stop the effects. Because I, I look at pictures of Puerto Rico, and it's still just so heartbreaking. And it's going to be for years, probably, uh, to come before they, they get back on track yes. with this. Um, what, what, can we, what, what else can be done? What, I'm sure that Puerto Rico will be part of an exhibit, perhaps, of the yes. museum. Uh, how, do we, how do we stop that? How do we reverse that? The first thing for us to do, the first step, and it sounds like a small thing, but it's deceptively difficult, is to start the climate conversation, to break the climate silence. Because as you have pointed out, we don't speak about climate even with our closest friends and family up, members. No. People don't talk about it even though a lot of people are worried about it and thinking about it. It seems too huge. It also seems so inapposite that the same phenomenon could cause Hurricane Maria, a wall of water, mm. and the wall of fire that we just saw in Northern California. That is, both of those things are almost certainly inflected strongly by climate change. That's what the science tells us. And yet, how do you intuitively understand that those two things could be related? Even if you get it intellectually, as a lot of people do, you don't experience it the same way that you experience simpler risks. It's just not how we're wired as a species. Mm. So that's another reason for the climate silence. A third reason here in the United States is the abominable crime committed by the fossil fuel companies in promoting misinformation and doubt about climate and just flat out lying about the degree of consensus among experts and scientists. That's a crime have you, that they've have you committed. Heard, have you heard from them at all? Uh, Not a peep. <laughs> <laughs> Not a peep. We have a, we have a donations policy that we adopted early on. I'm really proud and happy to say, and this is one of the advantages of being a brand new organization. It's a lot harder and it's a bigger lift than already having all the infrastructure and funding in place, no doubt. But one of the great things is that you're starting from scratch and some things that are now clear that weren't clear 50 years ago, we can take advantage of. So one of the first policies that we adopted as a matter of basic governance is we screen any kind of donation or sponsorship for consonance with our mission. Mm -hmm. um, we do not expect to hear from them. <laughs> um, and should they convert into, it's not a, it's not a basic, um, fatal, permanent, moral question from my perspective. If Exxon leaves its assets stranded in the ground, walks away from those profits, and helps us create the clean energy economy we need to thrive as a society, then I'm all for allowing them to be a sponsor of the museum. Um, it it's, would be a beautiful marriage. It would be fantastic. Mm. Uh, but first, they have to make those decisions because uh, right now they're on the side of maintaining the conditions that have caused the suffering that we've seen in, to use just one example, but a very poignant one right now for all of us, Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, people are so desperate for water. There's still a quarter of the population that doesn't have access to drinking water. People are begging for drinking water from Superfund sites that they know to be Superfund sites. Mm. If you think about what it would take for you to beg for water from a Superfund site to give your children, that, and that's in the United States. Mm. As, I, as I mentioned before, in Bangladesh, a third of the nation was underwater, inundated, mm. a couple of months ago. We've got to address this, we've got to address it urgently, and we've got to address it with a spirit of Optimism. Reasoned optimism? Yes. Not candy-coated optimism, but true optimism.